Good morning, everyone. Today is August 20th, and I thought I would start off today's stream with a little drone from Beads. This is just the internal wavetable uh, pushing out um, just a single note, and I am modulating with a Tumi LFO um, the wavetable, so just sweeping back and forth on the scorched tape setting for those interested. And um, yeah, I thought it might be nice to start it off with a little music rather than just my boring voice. All right, I'm gonna turn this down. We might have to revisit that a little bit later. But welcome to the morning pages. I don't know if I could really call it a show, but welcome to Wonderfish Morning Pages. Let me place my mic in a better position. Um, so yeah, you see the parameters below. Let's go ahead and get started with our music. Um, my goal is to have other people join in using some of the same parameters and uh, you know we might be able to um, work on something cool together. So today we are going to be in key of D, Pelog, Tembum. I have no idea what that is and again I'm going to have to look that up and do some research on it a little bit later if I like it. Um, our tempo will be set at 99. Uh, I will use the Micro Freak by Arturia. Um, it's a little digital uh, oscillator based synth with an analog filter. Um, technical difficulties aside because I haven't plugged it in in a while. Um, I'm going to try that build and drop uh, Ableton Live Pack, use Heaviosity's Vocalese VST, and then try this Max for Live Vibrato Cauldron. I have never used that before. And today's Oakley strategy of the day is breathe more deeply. I think that will go well with Vocalese because I think there's some breathy patches in there. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'll keep all of this down here for you and uh, join in um, if you feel like it. Let me move that over. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and set our tempo to 99. And I'm gonna go to the push. And be in D, and I gotta find this. Somebody knows how to pronounce that. Pelog Combring. Let's find that. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Pelog Tembum. Let's hear what that sounds like. Oh, this is a. This is the Moog matriarch making sounds right now. Very exotic sounding, um, at least for my ears. Okay, this might be hard to make some chords, so let me go ahead and uh, put in a vocalese. Hopefully, this isn't going to take too much of my CPU. It's usually a pretty CPU intensive plugin. Uh, vocals uh, oh this one's actually I think I'm gonna have to open it up and complete okay 
so while we wait for that to load, I'm going to go ahead and patch in the microfreak that you can see over here. And I'm going to have to plug that into, let's see, put it into track two. Where is my micro freak? Micro freak. There we go. Let's see if we can hear anything. I can, I can hear something. Let me re reload this. I was having a problem with it before, not making sounds, but there we go. sounding synth. Okay, let's go ahead and find vocalese. Oops. Oh, it looks like my library is still loading. that window go. No, that's not it. Well, it's reactor, so maybe I'll put in a reactor instrument. Oh, wait, no, I know how to do this. You guys see it over here? Oh, here it is. Okay. While that's loading on this channel, oh, I guess it's wait. Got the rainbow wheel of death. I hope I'm not gonna crash. Okay, here we go. Um, I actually have to change this USB device to channel 12 so I can control it from my push. Let me see if I'm able to control the micro freak. Yep, okay. So there we go. Let me rename this to my bro freak, just so if I ever have to open this again, I'll remember that. How are my levels doing on, on here? So this is vocalese. This may be a challenge because we are in a um, key that I'm not used to, but maybe we can find something that's in D. I don't have D. So let's go through some of these presets and see if there's a sound that we would want to start using. it up and we'll just play it in this key. That's pretty 
cool. Okay, um, yeah, that's sounding pretty nice. Nice and lush. And then rather than having our metronome going, because how many of you guys are sick of the live metronome options? Although you can customize them. But why not have a kick drum? Okay, we are in the tempo 99 beats per minute. And we can just tap in a little sequence. Just be a oh, uh, let me do this. And this one is very velocity sensitive. this at about 80%. Let's see how this sounds. This actually doesn't seem like it would be a good loop, but we can have it and just keep it at a length of um, 12 and it'll loop around um, after a little bit of a rest. Maybe that will be part of our oblique strategy, which is breathe more deeply, you know, where you can have um, longer pauses to be able to kind of rest. Of course, I don't know how the final product is going to turn out, and it might just be all jumbled. <laughs> but um, cool, I kind of like that. And then let's see how, what my CPU is doing. It's not too bad, but what I might do is I might, rather than just uh, freeze and flatten, I'm just going to record it in. And, you know, maybe we'll put in some external effects from the uh, H9. Let's put in uh, let's put in something kind of crazy. Yeah, like space time. Let's see how that sounds. Levels, levels.
rhythm. Maybe a micro pitch. Let's use this. Okay, so I'm going, I've armed my BST track and we're just going to record that in so we have it and we could use the instrument for something else. So there we go, we got it. Okay, the thing that I like about this method is now we can, you know, on the same track and without using too many system resources, we could maybe come up with something else. Uh, use another patch. Is there something that's breathy? Yeah, like this one. Because, yeah, this will kind of go again with our uh, oblique strategies of breathe more deeply. So I'm going to change the patch, and I usually like to write down the patch that I use, but, you know, we already printed it to uh, an audio track, and we can try to figure it out some other time. Okay, this one is called Tranquilocity. Ambient 01. So let's make some pads. And I'll take off that micro pitch. Rather than try and punch out these chords on the push, I'm going to try another method. that I learned from Elephant, E-L-P-H-N-T, um, over on... Oh, we are actually in C? Sorry, looks like we're in C. So we're gonna just stay in C and I will update. Let me, <laughs> let me update this. We'll be in C, because I don't want to redo my let's change this on the fly okay while that loads That's one way of changing parameters. <laughs> so what I think happens is he will... Let's just make an 8-bar loop. And um, what we can do is we can pick a bunch of random values. And we're 
just going to come up with a chord progression by simply using these notes that are within the scale in 11. And I'm just going to shift these. Also use Live 11's new chants and I'm going to just select all of these notes and I'm gonna pull these down to maybe 30% so this will have a all of these notes sounding will have a 30% chance of actually triggering and then I am going to also add a little uh, velocity range chance as well. So anything between about 64 and looks like about 100. Um, so they won't all be at the same time. Actually, let's make this a little more extreme. Let's see how this would sound. chance might be a little too low because they'll be let's raise this to maybe 37 percent and let's just see how this sounds haunting. Um, well, let's just record it in and see what happens. happy with that take but you know I can go into arrangement and actually let me go. I'm gonna change this range and I'm gonna lift this chance up to 47% So let's record it on this channel. Make an eight bar loop over here. And let me, let's view our take lanes. This is also a new feature, comping. And we will go ahead and loop this and we can have a bunch of different variations and we can choose the one that we like.
So take number three, or actually four. Because we have different um, variations, we can um, do as many takes as we want uh, in Live 11 now, in Arrangement View, and choose even different parts that we like or um, take out the parts that we don't. And I'll show you how that works. this lane. So right now we have, I'm going to take out this one as well, but we have one, two, three, four different takes to choose from. And anything that's highlighted yellow is what is going to be um, played in the main track. But if we use our pencil tool, we can actually pick and choose the different parts that we like of each take. So if we're just going to take some random steps like this, it might actually sound a little cool. Let's see what that would sound like. As you can see, anything that I'm selecting here with the pencil tool is going to show up uh, in the main uh, track lane. So let's see how, what this sounds like. I'm going to solo this out. So we're creating a little cool stutter effect, um, and I'm just gonna kind of go with that. And then this will be the take that we end up using. Step this up. There might be a faster way to do this. Um, but this is cool because imagine if you have a vocalist in your studio. I think this is a feature that a lot of producers wanted for a long time in live. But now you're able to just have them sing over a loop and you can pick and choose the, the, the pieces that you like best and um, you know it won't unless you're looking for a stutter type effect it won't necessarily be like the way that I'm doing it but this is kind of a different way of maybe using comping in live 11 and I have no idea what this is gonna sound like but this is our morning pages so you know no judgments. Okay, so right now we are just taking bits and pieces of each of the different takes. Yo, what's up, Kalos? How's it? How's everything on the East Coast? Yo, what's up, Latui? Okay, so right now what I'm doing is I'm kind of demonstrating the take lanes. Um, this isn't really a tutorial channel, but um, I like to kind of show what the new features are in um, This is Live 11. Um, and what we, what we did was we had four different takes of this vocalese uh, pad track, and I just took bits and pieces of each of the takes. So let's just see what this sounds like. I'm going to solo this out. <laughs> it's kind of a mess, <laughs> but it kind of has that stutter effect. Maybe we can add some reverb to make it um, a little more musical. Yo, thanks. 
Yeah, let me know if there's something you would want me to play. Today we're going to be using the uh, Microfreak. And I'm spending a lot of time on this one pad, but... Uh, so, let me put this into uh, track seven. I don't think I'm gonna be using that. So these will have to be separate tracks. Uh, they won't be played at the same time. But this is kind of a good basis that we can work with now. Now let's get to the Micro Freak. Um, I patched it over into this track. So one of these days I'm going to get a camera so you can see what I'm doing on this side. But uh, I'm going to just use a preset. Let's see. See if there's anything that's going to sound good. You know what? Let's just... I take that back. We're not going to use that. What's going on? I can't disable this. Okay. I'm going to disable that track and we're just going to go ahead and go with our. And play something along with the micro freak. In fact, just to be sure that I'm in the same world, I'm going to drag this over and maybe find uh, an arpeggiated patch that will go well with this. And then I'm gonna make this, because this will be an arpeggiator, I'm going to um, select all that and just make the chance 100%. And I know, oh, I'm gonna bump up, bump into some um, polyphony issues, but um, I'm gonna find an, a sequence. Let's see what this sounds like. I'm going to solo it out. This is the microfeet playing. And I'm going to transpose all this down. I'm not quite sure why these are... Sequencer is maybe these notes have to be a little shorter. Let's see what happens if I shorten this, if I get the second sequence. No. Okay, well. I only like this first part anyway. We're just gonna let this loop and record that in.
Oh, I see. It doesn't. It doesn't like the um, the abrupt change. It must have something to do with the processor. So I'm going to crop that clip, and I'm going to keep that going for 16 bars, and then I'm going to tweak some parameters while we do this. And in the interest of time, I'm just going to record what uh, what I'm doing. And why not have the why not have the kick going at the same time as well? Uh, track by ready. See, when it changes MIDI notes, I think um, I have too many notes going on at the same time. Probably just can't handle it. But I like that little sequence. And it goes well with those pads. And um, I'm just going to record in or just find maybe this take lane and use that as my pad instead of um, instead of messing with um, the comp planes. I just wanted to show you guys the comp. Um, okay. This is my first one. I'm not gonna use this because it sounds like it's in a totally different key. In fact, I'm gonna just use this whole thing so we have some variation. I guess we recorded this for a while. Okay, let's see what we have so far. Uh, take the micro freak off. This VST. That sounded pretty good. Okay, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with what we have. How's it going? Sorry, I, I end up getting in the flow and stop looking at the chat. Hope everyone's doing, doing well. Thanks for joining in, everyone. Aloha from Hawaii. So yeah, if you wanted to fire up your own DAW and use some of the parameters that I'm using, um, it'd be cool to do like a file swap at some point, since we're all, um, you know, if we follow some very loose parameters um, and just see kind of um, where that takes us. But I do this every morning, so yeah, joining, join me um, any day, be cool. Right now it is <clears throat> almost 8.30 a.m. in Hawaii. GSG, what's that? Do you see? Do you see it? I'll look up later. I'm gonna um, do a couple more things here. Um, build and drop. Okay, and I still also have to use that um, that vibrato cauldron, and then I think we've got everything in today's parameters. So build and drop. Um, I'm going to replace this Moog track with that. Let's find the build and drop. Under packs. Build and drop. I haven't used this. So, um, oh, actually, cool. We can use...
We can use one of these um, drum kits. Although it's going to sound a little weird maybe with um <laughs> This might sound cool cuz our jam is a little bit on the electronica side. So I'm going to replace right now this drum track is just going to the TR8S and to my other drum machines. Um, but we'll go ahead and put in um, this build and drop here. Let's see if there's something we can program in that might sound good. So I have a little bass, uh, a little bass line loop that I can use. Quantize this. And this isn't going. That I quantize. Oh, it's because I'm quantizing at 80%. Crop this clip, and I'm going to double it. And we'll just go ahead and do it nice and easy with the with the uh, eight bar loop. Oh, Golden Shrimp Skill, yeah, love it. Um, it's such a great community. Thanks for turning me on to it and uh, inviting me to the Discord server. I'm looking forward to getting more involved and. Um, but right now I'm just um, happy like looking through at, um, some of those old posts and um, um, just seeing what everyone is up to. It's, it's a cool community and um, yeah, it'd be cool to be, uh, to be part of um, one of the, the festivals. I guess you guys have monthly festivals and that looks really cool too. Okay, so um, with, this, with this drum, um, See what else we have. This hi hat is a little harsh to me, but um, maybe I'll change it, or at least I'm gonna put the velocity down. Yeah. Oh, well, that was not intended, but um, but good because I, I pulled the chance of those hi-hats firing, so it'll be a nice, uh, more chill type of hi-hat pattern. Check this out. We're at about 40%. Taking off this vocalese because my CPU is going nuts. But it looks like it's this build and drop. So, what I might have to do is I might just have to record this and, or, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna change my buffer size. 
all the way over here because I don't think I'm going to be playing too many more keys. We'll just keep it nice and simple today. Let's see if that helps. Oh yeah, a lot better. Ooh, I like this. I'm gonna put this right over there and Just for some variety. Okay. One of us, yes. Well, thanks for joining in on my stream. Um, I hope you at least find it interesting. So what I do is I just do this every day. Um, I, I've been doing it now for a couple years. You know, the first thing I do when I wake up is I fire up my DAW and the studio. Um, and I've got a pretty, it's, it looks complicated, but it's a pretty lightweight uh, live 11 set. Uh, and then I just make music for the first, it used to be for the first 20 minutes of my day, and now it's turned into about an hour. Um, and I just decided to live stream it. Um, mainly to just keep myself accountable to show up every day because um, it's very easy to just want to um, sleep in um, before starting the day without doing anything creative. So um, yeah, just by streaming it keeps me accountable. But super happy to have you guys here. I'm also, just another plug, um, I got this box delivered yesterday over here. Um, and I thought maybe I would do an um, unboxing. Um, it's kind of a surprise, but it's something I've been waiting for since January. And I know it looks like I don't have enough room, and I don't. Um, but yeah, I'll probably do that this afternoon. Um, but maybe I'll um, maybe I'll post it in the um, in the forum. Oh yeah, nice. Been streaming first thing in the morning too. Nice. Oh, yeah, 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 that JP8000 is awesome. I bought that back in the, um, in the 90s, kind of when it first came out. Um, but since moving to Hawaii, I'm from California originally, um, the keys started sticking down. So I don't know if you can see this, but if I push it down, the keys could kind of stick and it's because of the humidity and all of the rubber underneath is, um, is all gunked up. So down here I've got a dehumidifier because Hawaii humidity totally does a number on gear. Um, and, and so yeah, this um, I empty this thing, it's like it's a 50 pint dehumidifier and I empty it uh, once every two days. So it's like 50 pints of water on all of this gear for, you know, I've, I've been living here for 20 years. Um, yeah, it really does a number. Oh, nice. Oh, the B above middle C sticks on yours. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have the guts to open it up. I'm not super technically, um, technically savvy, but one of these days I'll try to go in and fix it. Okay, um, so the next thing I need to do is use this Mask for Live Vibrato Cauldron. I've never used this before. Cauldron, Max for Live. It's an audio effect. So why don't I put it on... Let's just see what it sounds like on, um, on this little lead part. Oh, 
Oh, it's a little bit of, yeah, it's a vibrato effect. I like how that thing, that how that ends. So I'm gonna keep that in, even though it's 17 bars. <laughs> um, okay. Um, yeah. It's a pretty simple little track, but uh, oh, you know what? Let let me let me put in a little bass line. I'm gonna use the trusty old Pro One. If it works, got my Pro One into track one. Make sure my settings here are right. We are on the Pro 1 here. There we go. Oh, <laughs> it's because I set my buffer at 2000 something. Okay, this will be hard. So actually, what I will do, I'm gonna repurpose this MIDI file again. And I'm going to put this on repeat. Yeah, I'm feeling super lazy today. Let's see what this sounds like. Those little audio stutters are from the, the latency setting, or the buffer size setting. But that's okay. Um, I'll add like a little delay effect. So we've got four parts. I'm just going to move my drum track here so we're just working in the same area. Hopefully I won't get a crash. Yeah, that resonance, I, I kind of went a little nuts.
Oh, nice. So, Callus, you're a night person. I'm kind of a morning person. I woke up kind of early today, but um, I tried to sleep in because actually today's a, a holiday in Hawaii. So, no work um, for state workers. Uh, it's statehood day. It's when we became a state, I think back in 1959. Yeah, morning people. I used to not be, but um, I think maybe in the last 10 or so years. Okay, so we've got, I think we've just got four, four tracks. I think we've hit everything we wanted to hit. Um, and then, so rather than, you know, actually record in the jam with the loops that I have, um, I need more practice being in arrangement view. So I'm going to spend the next 10 or so minutes just arranging this track uh, to, to become kind of a finished project for, for the time being. And I could always reference it later. OK. So I'm just putting it, pulling in my loops. And then now it's like, I mean, you guys all know, it's, this is more of like an Excel project now. So um, just to keep things straight, I'm going to rename all of my tracks. This is my pad. This one is my arpeggiated, arpeggiated pattern. This one is my bass line, and this one's just my drums. I know that. OK. So um, Let's, I like how that arc started off. I'm gonna move, not bring my pads in until about 16 bars in. I'll start my drums around here. I'll duplicate that and I'm going to just, I, in this one I won't play any hats. Let's see. This is um, I'll just put on a four on the floor here for that. Um, and then I'll put a little clap roll over here. Let's see. Yeah, something like that. And then my bass line um, won't kick in until maybe here. Yeah, OK. Um, oh, and then I'm just going to turn off my that track right there. Make sure nothing else is in here. Yeah, I will gray that out. And yeah, let's just see if we can, this could be like a nice little two minute track. I'm going to just put my loop brace up to about here, um, and we can see, we'll see what we can do. Let me duplicate this drum track again, split this one in half, and then maybe here is where, where I'll bring in some of the hats. So I will pick, oh, I'll, I'll take my, take this out. So let's see. snares to come in right there since this is a nice short piece and then rather than have the claps coming in right here we'll have it go like that Thank you. 
Is there a... I don't have a symbol or a cra- uh, I don't have a crash symbol in here. Let me put one in because you need a little crash symbol every once in a while. Crash. Uh... Oh yeah, I'm going to go through one of my I'm a huge Vince Clark fan. <laughs> so I'm going to just replace that with this triangle short. And let's find it. Here we go. Just start this over here, and it'll be nice, um, simple little jam. I'm gonna put uh, make this like a little. Let's see. Maybe this could. between 11 and 10 p.m. Ooh, up till 2 a.m. That's 8 p.m. here in Hawaii. Okay, let's see if this... Maybe in this one I'm gonna up the chance of those hi-hats coming in. Be a minute and thir uh, one minute thirty second jam, um, and I'm gonna get back to my automation lanes, and I'm gonna do what I love: cheat by just putting up a um, putting up the delay on everything, just towards the end of their parts, and. See. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, oh, if you guys have time. I'm gonna put in some vocals, oh, something, some vocals. The lines were finished for their red feast. The lines were standing on the edge of the clearing watching the two men. This is my, this is the radio app by uh, Plugin Boutique. Let's get out of here, George. And it essentially has thousands of online radio stations that you could reference and sample from. What? I'm not a lawyer, but you know. Um, I'm sure they've gotten some calls because it, they make it so easy to just take um, snippets. So I kind of keep it on this old time radio because I think it's all public domain sounds. 
don't quote me on that though. So I'm just gonna close that out. And so that little bit of audio that you just heard. Like too many others, you build it around creature comforts. Why? Um, and I'm thinking we can just. I mean, I just do this all the time. I, I love using simpler and then just chopping it up and then having some outside source trigger the MIDI notes. I'm going to slice it up. I'm going to change the sensitivity a little bit. And so, as you can see here, it's not on. And then I'll just use my delay all the way to um, and what I'll do is I'm going to find uh, my favorite sequencer, which is MDD Snake. Uh, it's, uh, if you're into Eurorack, it's the Rene uh, emulation. And um, right now I can't afford MDD uh, or uh, um, a Rene. So this is actually a pretty fun uh, one to play around with because you get all of the same interfaces, including the gate and the velocities, and you can also change the steps. So just to give it some variety, I'm going to use some prime numbers. Uh, 15 is in prime, but um, okay. Let's just see what this sounds like. Start new. And I'm just going to record that. So that's coming from radio. And um, for right now, yeah, just to get some samples in there and I could place it wherever I want. Start new. Change it up. And I just realized it's not going to pick up that delay um, because I'm recording it straight from the channel. But um, I'm going to add my own delay. Let me put in a um, an echo. And we're going to not link it up and we're not going to sync it. We're just going to let it let it run. That add some more feedback. Let's see what this sounds like here. Okay, and I will put that in. Put this in at the beginning. Um, where are my breaks? Actually, this should just all go until the drums kick in, and then what I'll do is just take this last part over here. Right there. And then just towards the end to kind of, you know, and I can actually take a little part in here just to give some more vocal ambiance. i 
reverse this. Let's just record this in. I don't know how this is gonna. Yeah, let's just record it in. And that will be our jam for the day. And um, stay tuned later this afternoon for me in uh, Hawaii time, maybe in the next couple hours. I'm gonna come back on and I'm gonna open this box over here. I've been dying to, to get this into my system. You won't be disappointed, I think. It's, um, I should want to open it right now. <laughs> okay, uh, and I'm just going to record it on this master channel. Make sure nothing else is armed. Actually, I can just, all right, like that. All right, okay. So I'm gonna let this play, and that's our jam for the day. Um, so to sum it up, we are um, at 99 BPM using that C Pelog Tom, what is that? Tembung uh, scale. We use the Microfreak for that main arpeggiated part. We use build and drop for the drums. Uh, we use vocalese for the pads. We use the Pro 1 for the bass line, um, and we use that Max for Live vibrato cauldron on the uh, Microfreak uh, leads part. Um, so yeah, that's today's jam, and I'll listen to it again in a couple weeks to see if it's something I would want to continue working with. So thanks for joining. That delay is nuts. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you later on. Um, thanks again for the invite uh, to the group. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Oh, man, that echo is still ringing out. All right. See you guys.